might say, Dave, why do I want to torture my grill? What a stupid question. Of course you want to torture my grill. One of my diversions for today is to uh, do some grilling. Actually, I'm going to smoke a uh, rotisserie chicken later today. And I thought I'd use the opportunity to give you uh, a little uh, show and tell about how to add a blowtorch to your grill or your smoker. So what I have here is uh, the burns o matic TS-8000 trigger start um, mounted on my grill uh, and connected to the 20-pound LP tank. So um, the cool thing about these torches is they can run on map gas or they can run on normal LP gas like you might uh, typically see with a one pound propane cylinder like this. So certainly you could use it like that, but if you want the convenience of using the same tank for both your gas grill and your uh, torch, um, you can hook it up that way. So what I'm gonna show you today is a, first a couple of safety uh, things right off. Uh, the most important thing is to do this safely. A torch gets very hot at the tip, so you have to have a safe place to put it. The problem, or the potential problem, when you take off the cylinder is you can no longer stand the torch up, right? I mean, it's just on a hose. So you, need, so you need a safe place to rest it on your grill. On my grill, I'll show you uh, how it, it happened to have a convenient place to do that, but you can buy uh, rests for, uh, for torches that only cost a couple bucks, uh, metal rests where they kind of hang on this portion of it, and something like that is, is warranted if you're thinking to do this. On my grill, one of the initial inspirations for me to get the torch, honestly, was my igniter never worked. On old grills, right, those igniters never work anyway. So when I removed the push-button igniter, it turned out that, that there was a metal ring there where I could put the torch in there. And, of course, I have to look at what's going on the other side. Let's see what's going on on the other side. On my grill, that is nowhere near anything plastic or wood, nor the hose for the LP tank. Uh, you can move that tip all around. It's only It could only touch metal. So a perfect place on my grill for me to uh, to rest the components. I'll take you around the grill. I'll show you the components and I'll show you a few of the things that I use it for. So here's the 20 pound elk tank on my grill. And you can see what I've done here is I've bought a, a Y adapter uh, or a splitter for that LP tank. So that gives me just two of the same connections. And while I was at it, I happened to buy one with a pressure gauge just so I have some idea of actually whether or not my uh, tank warmer is working well because I grill all year round and it gets cold here. So that's the first component you need. Oh, sure. The next thing you need is you need a, uh, you need a hose uh, to go to the to go to the torch. And I found that a five foot hose minimum is what you're going to need because what you don't want to do is have it too short and you not be able to move it freely because that's just going to be dangerous. You're going to be pulling the grill if you pull the torch handle and things. And of course, usually these are just rubber hoses. Well, that's super dangerous if it can come in contact with the tip. So uh, get a braided hose uh, so that if it ever accidentally touches to the tip, it's not going to immediately melt through and cause you a problem. So let's take a look at the torch. It's the Burns & Mac TS-8000, so the TS is for trigger start. Uh, you can control the flow here, so that's one way to shut off the gas. Another way to keep the trigger from starting is use this lock here. When it's in the unlock position, all you have to do is push that button and it lights. Um, one of the things you need to remember is when you're using that thing with a long hose, is that hose is full of gas, right? So even when the even when the the gas tank is off, your torch is still going to light. I mentioned using the uh, the torch also with with uh, cylinders. You can use the one pound cylinders like this, or you can use the ones made, for instance, for camp stoves like this. Uh, if you're just going to use it for the home, I suggest buying one of these bigger ones. There's even another one that's even broader than this. They're just uh, more likely to stand up straight. This is the sort that you could put like a tiny camp stove on top of. These stand up, of course, but they're a little tippy. So, um, so what do I use this for and where does it need to reach? Well, I use it for three things. The first thing I use it for is to actually light the grill because I don't have a working igniter on here. So the way I do that is, let's say we turn on, um, we'll turn on this burner here and I have an access hole over here that just has me on my grill and you can start it like that. So it just happened to have that access hole already on the grill. The other thing I use it for is for my uh, Smoke Daddy uh, cold smoke generator. So I have a cold smoke generator, which is an aluminum cylinder uh, attached to this side of the gas grill. 
you fill it with uh, charcoal and wood chunks and then you can you light it from the bottom down here so you can take that off so your torch is going to have to have clearance to reach here and you light it like that. And after a minute or two, you've got a good fire burning in there with the wood. And then using gloves, um, you know, put the put the cold smoker cap back on. And then, and then the torch will help you maintain the fire both in your cold smoke generator and in the, uh, and, and you know and light the gas grill itself. So you're using the gas for heat, and you're using this for the wood smoke. The other thing I use it for, of course, is for cooking. If you want to. Uh, say blackened vegetables like peppers or tomatoes or uh, sweet corn. You can sear meats. So you know, blow a torch on your grill. It's a neat way to impress your friends and frighten your neighbors. So this is to add. And, uh, I'll see you next time.